Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. I'm so excited for season two and the great guests you're going to hear from, their struggles, how they overcame their struggles, their triumphs. Through personal and business life, I think they're tied together and we're going to share great stories about that. This show isn't just about me. It takes a lot of good people working with me. Among them is my partner, 8-7 Network and Clay Hicks. Building relationships, building community is the mission of H7 Network. They want to create a network of champions where everybody wins. Find out more at h7network.com. And we hope to motivate you, inspire you, and educate you through our show. Enjoy the show. We'll talk to you on the other side. Welcome, everyone. This is your host, Steve Ramona, with the podcast, Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. As I've talked about before, I believe a servant that's helping people with the mental health, they should be kings and queens. And because this is, it's an epidemic, COVID's caused us problems. And I've got a guest on here that's going to give you so many nuggets. Have a pad and paper, pad and pin by your side, because I do right here. I'm going to show you, because I'm going to take notes as he's talking. Kevin, Welcome to the show. Thanks, Steve. It's really great to be here. Well, it's my pleasure, because we're going to jump in mental health. I know that's what you do as a business, and you have this website called Uchi, if I say it right, right? That's correct. Why that website and why that name? So Uchi in Japanese means in-group or inner circle. So our mission is to help people connect authentically with those closest to them. So it's a social platform, but it is not a social media. It's really just about deepening the relationship, strengthening the relationship and connection with those closest to you, because those are the people who tend to have the most impact on your life. You know, if we don't feel heard and understood by the people closest to us, it hurts. It causes pain. It causes real pain. And that pain is emotional. It's not mental, it's not physical, it's emotional pain. And, you know, our brain can't distinguish between physical pain and emotional pain. All our brain knows is, I'm in pain, do something about it right now. And in the absence of really knowing how to love and connect and establish a true sense of belonging, even in our own home or in a couple's relationship, um, in the absence of that, we end up turning to behaviors all kinds of behaviors, um, which can cause even more problems, you know, whether it's addiction, depression, suicide, eating disorders, or it can be really constructive behaviors, Mm -hmm. such as workaholic or exerciseaholic, professional athletes, actors, you know, they struggle big time. And it's, it's really the behavior that's trying to compensate for the pain but that root pain is there. So that gets a little deep right off the bat. Sorry about that. That's okay. But you said a a word I love is building relationships because that works professionally and personally as well. Tie that into mental health because I think you have an awesome way of doing that. Yeah, yeah. So so what Uchi is, is it's the social app that uh, that facilitates communication and connection, um, which I can explain more, or you can just go to uchiconnection.com and it's it's really pretty self-explanatory, very intuitive. But the way it relates to the mental health is, well, quite honestly, I don't feel like I really have anything to do with mental health because my definition for mental health is very different than mainstream society. And my definition for emotional health is very different than mainstream society. To me, there's really four elements of health that make up our well being, our wellness that's physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. But like I said, my definitions for emotional, mental, and spiritual are very different. So I'll share that with you. So to me, mental health is really about our thinking ability. It's our ability to focus, concentrate, think clearly, perform cognitive tasks. It's basically our frontal lobe. It's our reasoning and decision-making ability. So then when we wonder... Oh, why would somebody do drugs? Why would they start smoking? Why would they eat to excess or not eat at all? They must be crazy. They must be broken 
Because if you can't, I would never do anything so ridiculous like that and harm myself. So your brain must be broken. I think that's how we think about mental health. And I think that's completely incorrect. What I think is really happening is, and this is my definition for emotional health, which is our ability to give and receive love. And by love, I mean love, connection, and a sense of belonging. This is different than emotional intelligence, which is also important. But emotional intelligence is our ability to understand, recognize, and manage our emotions. Well, when your emotion has already happened, you get triggered by something and emotion happens. Now, emotional intelligence is all about how am I going to manage that emotion? Do I recognize it? How do I manage it? Emotional health to me is more about why am I having that emotion in the first place? And what I've learned over the last 22 years is it's the emotion is usually triggered by your relationship with somebody else. It's and it could be anybody. It could be your boss. It could even be the president of the United States is what's triggering you. Um, it's another person. Typically, that's that's what's triggering you. And when we don't feel heard and understood as a person, then we don't feel like we matter. We don't feel like we have any value in this world. And in our brain, value translates to love. And love is a basic human need. Without love, it causes pain, you know? And, and like I said earlier, we'll do anything to stop the pain. And in the absence of knowing how to connect and love each other, to really listen and hear and understand, to really acknowledge and validate what that person is saying so that they feel heard. Without that, that's why we turn to behaviors. We're trying to compensate for the pain. You know, there's no gene or hormone for evilness or for um, bad, you know, but there is a hormone specifically designed for love and that's oxytocin. And it feels really good, you know, when we're getting it, when we're connecting. So that's what Uchi is all about is being heard and, and feeling heard and understood by those closest to you, you know, because, you know, if my sister walks out of a star or if some stranger walks out of a Starbucks in Idaho and gets hit by a car, it doesn't affect me. I don't want that person to get hit by a car, but it doesn't impact my life. But if my sister walks out of Starbucks and gets hit by a car, my entire world is upside down because yeah. my sister is so much closer to me. So Uchi's all about those 5, 10, 20 or so people in your life, your friends, your family, a couple of coworkers, someone from your volleyball team or club or something. It's about connecting deeper. And I think one of our big problems in society is that we're really only socializing really we're just connecting at the surface level that's pretty much what social media is about um yeah. and and we're not connecting below the surface where we really feel heard and understood and the other thing that we're really doing and now i've got i haven't even shut up for like five minutes straight here it's um okay. but the other thing that we're doing is the way that we're raising our children we're raising them in this authoritarian style we raise them in an environment of shame and judgment and degradation and emotional neglect. There's other elements, but those are the four that I've landed on. And to me, those are little T traumas. So there, we've heard of big T trauma, like, um, you know, sexual assault, verbal, like you, you stupid bullying. idiot, you know, <laughs> bullying, even by your parents, you know, bullying, um, degrading. I mean, I've listened to um, parents you know, say to their kid, even when the kid's five years old, saying, you're so stupid. Why did you do that? That's such a dumb thing to do. You're such an idiot. That's how parents talk to their kids. That causes stress. That causes your cortisol to rise. It causes pain. And, you know, when you've got that cortisol pumping through your body on a regular basis, you know what it does to your brain chemistry? It changes your brain chemistry. Now we wonder why three-year-olds are being diagnosed with clinical depression. We don't really just go spontaneously crazy or, or off. Like that doesn't really happen. It can happen, but I think it's about as common as being born without an arm or a finger. It happens. It's real. 
but it's Infrequent. so rare. Infrequent. And I think it's the same thing with the emotional health and the behaviors and the brain chemistry. So that was a big mouthful of stuff. I'm not sure where you might want to go. No, no, it's <laughs> that's great because I want to lead into the journey of Uchi. Oh, uh, one of the listeners, when they come aboard, they become a client, you know, a member, it's a membership. Mm -hmm. Walk them through the journey, what they're going to do. And, you know, you did a little bit about the family and friends, but. Oh, on Uchi. Yeah. yeah. So, so my journey, it's funny. Um, my background is actually biomedical engineering. So medical device research and development, designing like total joint replacements and implants for spine surgery. But, you know, in my heart, I'm a problem solver, you know, and I don't want anyone to experience pain or uneasiness in any way. I just want everyone to be happy, to be honest with you. And the way this all actually started was back in 2001, when I was, I was observing an argument between a father and his teenage daughter. And it occurred to me that they weren't saying how they truly felt or what they were really thinking. And I'm like, if they could just say what's really on their mind or in their heart, they would have no argument. Yeah. Like, cause they would know what's going on. Well, fast forward 15 years <laughs> and I'm still on my own journey because you know, nobody's perfect. I'm certainly not. Well, 15 years after that, I realized, wow, you know, I actually created this whole app. It was a website first because it all started before smartphones and, and um, apps even existed. But it took me 15 years to figure out that I actually started this because I needed to feel heard and understood by my parents. That's really the problem that I was trying to solve. You know, I never felt like they got me. I knew they loved me, you know, and they said it, you know, and I spent time and they supported me. But I also always felt like the black sheep of the family. I never felt like I was truly understood. And from using the app or using the website before it was an app, um, it was amazing because the way it works is, you know, you've seen those card games where you ask a question and everyone goes around the table and answers yeah. that's that's uchi but it's all on an app so you can do it you don't have to be in the same room at the same time to do it right you can do it from you know different time zones around the world it's all asynchronous so uchi has this huge database of questions that go just below the surface right mm -hmm. it's not therapy it's not trying to learn your deep dark secrets <laughs> it's just trying to see and learn your perspective on the world and it's only using the written word there are no pictures there's no video there's no audio it's just your words and you know we have forgotten the power of the written word especially through covid but you know the written word is so powerful we know from 2500 years of data that two people can have a profoundly deep connection just from writing letters right I mean, you're old enough to know pen pals, right? Mm -hmm. And love letters, right? You know, so, and and the book is always better than the movie, yeah. right? So we think that we have to go video and pictures, but I think in a lot of ways, those are a cop-out for the written word. Those are like a short a shortcut in many ways. In many ways, they're wonderful and, and valuable, but when you need a chance to really get it out of your system, and that's what Uchi does too, because Uchi starts with a question. You choose the questions that you want to answer, but just by answering that question, you're first journaling. And there's tons of data on the power of journaling. Yeah. And now we take it to another level because you get to share that little journal snippet, that answer to a question, which could even be a one word answer, you know? Yeah. But you get to share that answer with the people who matter to you. And it's only available to the people who matter to you, right? So nothing's public on Uchi. All private, yeah. It's all private just for your Uchi friends. Your Uchi, right? Your in-group, yeah. yeah. right? So it's, it's just your Uchi. It's interesting, and I don't mean mm -hmm. to cut you off, but I want to get this point out about video marketing and video. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I use it all the time because we have to, because people's times is so short now. That's why we went from love letters and writing letters and and things like that. I have a uh, project I'm working on that's tied to that. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right, Kevin. It, it, it's 
Yeah, but we miss a lot of value yes. when we don't when we don't take our time to really connect then the connections don't have the value. And we've got all the data on social media on how the connections are not we're not actually having real connections. You know, we have quantity, but we don't have quality. Yeah. You know, and the other side of Uchi, just the other main rule of Uchi. So only your friends can read your answers. And they can only read your answer if they've already answered that question. So you have to contribute in order to consume. And that is so important because how can you have a relationship if only one person is sharing? Social media. You just announced social media. That's Facebook, social media. puts on there that, you know, something happened, political, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got 8,000 friends and 50 answers. Yeah. So 7,950 people Nothing. don't answer. Nothing. That's a you great know? comment. Right. You know, 99% of tweets get zero engagement. <laughs> so if it's not a two way street, how can you have a relationship? No, you can't. You can't. And yeah. that's, that's where we're struggling. And that's why I created Uchi to make it a little easier just to get the conversation started. And I mean, I can tell you, there was a father who wrote in a while back and he's like, you know, thank you so much for this platform. My daughter, my 12-year-old daughter has not spoken to my ex-wife in more than a year. And within a week of using your platform, they've started talking again. Amen. That's powerful. That's how Game it changer. happens. Game changer. That's, that's the goal. That's the goal. Okay, yeah. You got me excited about Uchi. I know listeners are getting excited about Uchi. Before we forget, do a shout out because somebody's going to want to reach out to you. Oh, yeah. So you can easily, you know, the contact page on UchiConnection.com, you know, I'll get it. You know, truth be told, I'm a solopreneur. Um, I, you know, I have consultants that I use, like software consultants and all to, to, you know, write the code and everything. But it's just me. Um, But everything is automated. And Uchi is free. You know, Uchi is a free platform. There's no ads or investors or anything. So you can get on today. Um, We don't collect data. We don't mine any data. There's no algorithm to what you see, you know? So I'll, I'll tell you what the algorithm is. It's only your Uchi friends and it's chronological order with the most recent answer or comment at the top. That's the entire algorithm. So you're not getting fed this and that. You cannot even search for somebody on the platform. That's how private it is. The only way to connect with somebody is to know their email address. We don't even use phone numbers. It's just your email address. And then you can invite them or they can invite you and you can accept and so on. But I, here's I what that. I will say. I oh, that. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I mean, no, I no, can go ahead. so go much. Ahead. But what I will say is obviously there has to be a revenue stream, right? There needs to be a, a business mm-hmm. model. And the business model is where anybody can be an Uchi tribe leader. So you can be a leader of your own little tribe, which could have nothing to do with your regular Uchi activity. And an Uchi tribe is where a tribe leader comes up with up to 10 questions and invites up to 10 people to participate in conversation. And you can create as many Uchi tribes as you want. So if you change the questions and use the same people, that's another Uchi tribe. Or if you change the people and use the same questions, that's another Uchi tribe. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that teachers can do this with their classes. If you wanna engage your students Oh my God, you will actually be overwhelmed in a good way with how much student engagement you get when you use Uchi in the classroom. And we've worked with university, we've worked with public schools like high school, middle school. We've worked with this and they love it because we don't collect data. We don't mine data and there's no bullying or predators or trolling because the teacher is involved in every conversation because if the teacher's not in the conversation, then they don't have access to the answers because yeah. that's our rule. It's so if you cool. want student engagement, you it is unbelievable how how quickly they engage. It's a good reason to be on your phone. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's the problem. And it's interesting. I do a text Uchi. I call Uchi with my two best friends, my mm-hmm. best friend, my wedding, and my friend for on a book we read every day. We read a chapter. Mm-hmm. And it's We've been doing it since day one, and we miss. He'd come back, go, hey, I haven't heard from you guys in a while. He just did this a few weeks ago and got me back into it, and it right. works. 
you're just and taking it, it to the next level. I'm just I'm just growing that yeah. and and automating it and making it you know as an app just easy for yeah. for it to be uh, modeled you know time and again. I mean, you could do follow up after a webinar or after an in person event. Use Uchi as follow up because you know as soon as that event's over, it's like you just drop off a cliff of activity, right? There's a huge build up to the event, and then as soon as the event's over, maybe there's an automated follow up email or a couple of days of excitement, yeah. And then it just drops off. But with Uchi, you can continue the conversation by asking some real questions that are relevant to what happened. You know, I use it with my family, come up with questions that are specific just for my family, Mm -hmm. because it's only going to be relevant to them. And then it's the same thing in the workplace. You know, we know that 75% of people quit their job because of their boss or management, right? It's And is it because the boss is overweight? Is that why they quit? No. Is it because the boss didn't eat enough vegetables? No. Is it because the boss didn't take 10,000 steps that day? No. It's because the employee doesn't feel heard and understood by their boss. It's a relationship problem. And when, when they don't feel heard and understood, they turn negative, the culture turns toxic, the engagement drops off, the productivity reduces, the innovation is non-existent, and then you have a completely negative environment and ultimately retention. You have a retention problem. Yeah. So you can try and focus on the symptom, but I just listed the symptoms. The root cause as I see it is the relationship. And in my book, which is called Innovate the 1%, which isn't about this stuff, but it's about how to innovate. The second chapter is all about relationships. The more you love and connect with the people you're working with, the more you're going to innovate because you're having such a good time, right? Happy people do good things and hurt people will hurt people, even themselves. Right. And we could take that to the next level working with CEOs. They, because you're not going to, you know, you're an admin, you're not going to talk to the CEO directly, but the culture the company builds builds relationships too. If you don't have a good culture, they're going to start walking out the door. Absolutely. And and Elon Musk is what comes to my head, Twitter. Now he's recovered, it sounds like, but he started firing people because of culture. Right or wrong, that's not what we hear today, but it's right relationships. You want a better cultural relationship with his employees. Right. It's exactly that. I mean, you're hitting the nail on the head. And, you know, and this is the difference that I see between mental health and emotional health. Like to me, Elon Musk mentally That guy, he's like genius level, right? He's done amazing things with Tesla and SpaceX, and we'll see what happens with Twitter. But this guy, he knows stuff, right? His thinking is incredible. But emotionally, he's on his third marriage. He has seven children. His oldest child had had filed, and I think won, for being completely exonerated from him. I think that's the right word. Um, So she's completely disassociated and detached from her father, what does that tell you about his ability to have relationships? And what I always say is the more extreme the behavior, the deeper the emotional pain. Mentally, that guy, frontal lobe, is on fire. But emotionally, which is your midbrain, which is a more basic element of your brain, he's a wreck. And that's why he struggles with all his relationships, including he needs to be the, the chief technical officer at an organization not the CEO. Amen. Steve Jobs is another guy that comes in the same same type of situation. Exactly the same. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. I mean, you could go on, Donald <laughs> on Trump, on, yeah. you know, on and oh, on and yeah. on. Well, I, you, you sold me on Uchi. And this is how you sold me. I, I'm going to look at it again because I do love what you're doing. Um, I'm going to send five gifts, five people, the first five people that reach out to you, Kevin. And mention okay. this podcast or my name. You, he's going to reach out to me and say, "Hey, these five people, I will mail you a gift." I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. What he's talking Beautiful. about, because I one million percent believe in this. It's cool. I, I love that word. It's cool. It's simple. It's not complicated. And you had the great thing. This thing in my hand. We need to utilize it, not take advantage of it, but utilize it. And that's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. That's the goal. Just Uchi is a tool. There's other ways to accomplish relationships, right? But if talking was working, 
we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. It, it's such an obvious point, but we need to hear it. We keep saying, got to talk more, got to talk more. But again, most of our conversations are riddled with shame and judgment. That's what I grew up with. I grew up in a home, loving parents, you know, and all that, which was very, very good. I don't have any of the adverse childhood experiences, which too many people have, and it's horrible, and I don't want any of that. But I grew up in a home of constant judgment and criticism. No matter what I did, it wasn't good enough. They didn't yell or scream at me, but they made me feel bad about it. Not on purpose, but that's how I felt. You know, if I got a B on a test, oh, why didn't you get an A? If you would have done what we said, you would have gotten an A. Basically, they were positioning themselves as more valuable than me. But we all have equal value in this world. Every human being, I don't care what your background is. I don't care what your age or gender or race or color or religion or political stance. I don't care if you are a homo sapien. Yeah, you have we all have equal value. Well, I'm going to do a shameless plug for Apple, Apple TV and Ted Lasso, the TV series which I think is incredible and it's getting a lot of views. I just watched it last night with my wife and it was interesting. They had a scene with one of the guy characters with his dad. He's playing the violin and he go, oh, you know, he got startled and they got in that conversation. Dad, you never backed me. He said, I starts crying. He goes, you're an absolute genius. You are a wonder kid. I didn't tell you enough. You know, he's in his thirties. Right. Kevin, you're in your thirties. You know, that's, Oh, I'm in my 50s, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> the audience got that. But I love what you said because maybe it was too late, maybe it's not, but he had major trauma with that and was a very yeah. isolated kid. Yeah, and it's that little T trauma. I think the little T trauma is what every human is being raised with. And I can go on a whole nother topic about why I think that is and why we are where we are today as a species. But this this little t trauma i mean think about what we reinforce at home or in school for example you're three years old two three years old you're you're learning how to be potty trained oh steve is such a good boy he went in the potty today yay steve you get a lollipop oh kevin he's a bad boy he didn't go in the potty he's bad that's judgment that is shame i know we're trying to get the behavior from someone that you, we're causing serious little T trauma. And just saying, I love you at the end of the day will not undo a whole day's worth of shame and judgment. The same thing happens in school with grades and class ranking. And, you know, oh, I got an A on the test. What'd you get? You got a C? Oh, you're a stupid idiot. Yeah. That's trauma. And I know it's like, oh, put your big boy pants on and, you know, got to have a thicker skin. No, we are traumatizing each other constantly. You know, you put your things in the cubby in kindergarten, you're a good boy. I don't put my things in my cubby. I'm a bad boy. Now I have a label. Now I have an association. Now I start to develop an identity. Now I start to reinforce that identity. And it doesn't take much reinforcement, only a few times. And that starts getting repeated. Right. It starts to, re you start re having a, um, a chemical response, you know, you make a chemical for every feeling that you have. And when you get more and more used to that chemical in your body, the more you get used to having it and making it, you just keep reinforcing it. Yeah, That's why it's so hard to get away from these addictions, even when it's like a chemical addiction. Once you've, you know, gotten used to nicotine, why did you start smoking in the first place? You can't be addicted to nicotine if you haven't started smoking. So why did you smoke in the first place? More often than not, it's because, well, they're all going smoking. I want to belong somewhere because I don't really feel like I belong in my own family. Not because family isn't trying to make you belong, but that's how you feel. So then you start smoking or you join a gang, right? Or you join, you know, white supremacist group or a terrorist group or or a religion, or a sports team, or whatever. It, you, I, it doesn't matter. Wanted. We're just looking for connection and belonging, and family is really the first place. That we start at. Yeah, and we're running we out of time here, uh, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. I love when we go over time. And we'll end with this. You start in the beginning about words. All that stuff is words, whether it's written or spoken or in a video. Mm -hmm. It falls to the really common denominator the lowest threshold is words 
how to use yeah. your words and you know say that words matter yeah. yeah they make a difference well thank you mm -hmm. for being on this has been a golden nugget proliferate of knowledge that you've thrown out here i'm sure my audience is going to reach out if i could have one more favor from you can you leave my audience with a tip that's helped you get to where you are today you've had your ups and downs we've heard but what's one thing that sticks out that you could that can help them Oh, so this is in a totally different direction, but a tip that's gotten me where I am today is just keep asking why until you actually get to the true root problem. Because honestly, if the mental health industry was really working, we wouldn't be at this problem. We wouldn't be in the situations that we are in today. And what I have learned through my career is that once you identify the true root problem, the symptoms, well, first, the problem is super easy to solve usually. And then the symptoms, which are the behaviors, naturally go away.